The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Wednesday morning, one hour to go to until that opening bell. And we got markets in negative territory right now. S&P futures negative by about 18 points or six tenths percent, trading at 3,100 on the dot. NASDAQ futures negative by 24 points or about two tenths percent, 10,171. You had the NQs, record territory yesterday. Dow off 190 points, 25,830. We've got oil negative today, 81 cents, trading at 39.56. We get EIA numbers two hours from right now, 1030 a.m. Eastern time. Tom and I will be on the air for those. We got the 10 year yield ticking up as we're getting some lower price. In yield, uh, excuse me, yeah, lower price in the notes, higher yield, the 10 year yield yielding 0.73%. To see what that looks like on price, there's your 10 year down about six ticks at 138.17. You get the 30 year down 11 ticks right now at 176.19. I mentioned oil down 82 cents at 39.55. You back it up. We're about $2, though, from the high that we had about 24 hours ago, 41.63 in the price of crude. Gold contract up $4 to 1786, hit a high of 1796 earlier this morning. For some context on gold, you back it up. That's a three year weekly. It's basically been a rocket ship since November of 18, you could argue. Really, things accelerated. May of last year, you're talking about the last 13 months. You traded from 1276. We're flirting with recent all time highs, and you want to back it up to where we were the max 1923 that all-time high taking place 2011 and folks we're right back up to where we were on those all-time highs in the price of gold drilling back down to the shorter time frame jumping around to the VIX as this market creeps a little bit lower we got a little elevated territory in the VIX 29 handle to open trading yesterday actually made it down to a 29 handle in the afternoon as well briefly Spike to a high last night in the VIX, 33.76, currently trading in 32.19 as we've stemmed the worst of some of those losses in the market. Jumping over to the S&P to take a look. So, of course, late, late Monday night, we get Peter Navarro's gaffe, whatever it was out there, saying the China deal is no longer. We charge back. What I want to point out is this was yesterday's action, and we stayed relatively calmly at this level that we were at in terms of regard uh, above, let's say, the flash low we had. But last night, things accelerating. There's potential for new trade concerns, talking about EU tariffs potentially coming into play, that hitting the market, COVID-19 accelerating hitting the market. Either way, at about 3.30 a.m., you have markets trade from 31.21. You trade down about 40 points by 5.15 to 3,081. And then you see we've bounced about 20 points since then. But man, we made it within 20 points of the flash low yesterday that we had on those Peter Navarro comments, trades, trade concerns, always at the forefront of what we have going on. And we'll see how that plays out. All right, let's jump over to some of the equities. We'll jump right into it. Stocks making moves this morning. So Carnival, their debt rating count. Excuse me, cut to junk by S&P, which is forecasting continued weak demand for the cruise industry due to COVID-19 should not be a startling revelation, folks. Nonetheless, Carnival from 18 to about 17. Dell Technologies, so Dell exploring options for its $50 billion stake in VMware. According to the journal, those options include both selling the stake or buying a portion of VMware that it doesn't already own. So they, they either wanna go all in or all out. Winnebago out with their numbers. The recreational vehicle maker lost 26 cents a share for its latest quarter. Market was looking for a loss of 45 cents. Revenue well above estimates despite the negative impacts of the shutdowns. Hey, maybe when you're shut down, you wanna go for, uh, what's that symbol? I should know it. It's a good one. What is it? Nah, WGO. Um, maybe people want to just uh, ride off into the sunset in their Winnebago in their quarantine. For some context on this stock, look at that, right? Winners and losers. Talk about winners and losers, folks. Winnebago, Winnebago from 60 down to 16. And we're going to open right under 70, 68.50 by 69.50 on their bid offer with their earnings out. 
Just remarkable, some of the accelerations these stocks have had. Dick's Sporting Goods, I personally have talked about. I've been to Dick's. Uh, they get some great curbside takeaway. Um, sounds like Outback Steakhouse, Carabas. No, it's Dick's Sporting Goods. You order it, you check in when you're there, they bring it right out to your car and your window. You don't do anything. Uh, Cowan upgraded the sports goods retailer stock to outperform for market perform, noting increased market share as well as strong growth in e-commerce. DKS, I think. There you go. So you're going to open a bit higher today at around 42. You were at 41.44, not quite back up to pre-COVID levels, but you were in uh, low teens, 13.46 uh, in the, the low of the market around March. Just remarkable. Now back above 40 at 42 for Dick Sporting Goods. Morgan Stanley upgraded to a buy from neutral, cited several factors, including attractive valuation and lower credit risk for Morgan Stanley compared to its peers. Morgan Stanley going to open basically flat. 47.60 this morning was down to 27, currently right there. T-Mobile said its sale of shares in the public offering priced at 103. The share offering was part of SoftBank Group's sale of shares in the wireless carrier. T-Mobile had closed Tuesday at 106. So SoftBank are loading shares just under market at 103. To see how that hits T-Mobile shares, TMUS is their symbol. We're going to open at about 108. Not bad to be a T-Mobile shareholder. Simon Property. So the mall operator is teaming up with shopping center operator Brookfield Property Partners to explore a bid for bankrupt retailer J.C. Penney, according to the journal. Penny is Simon's second largest mall anchor tenant behind Macy. So it looks like Simon, well aware that if they start losing these anchors in terms of J.C. Penney, Macy's, that might be the end of their business as they know it. So what are they going to do? They're going to say, you know what? We're going to conglomerate everything. We're going to put it under one roof and we're going to own J.C. Penney since it's going out of business. We'll see how that plays out, folks. I mean, the mall business, they, they, they may be around. They're going to have to shift what they do, though, in terms of being an activity center almost, right? Movies, restaurants, um, the likes of needing to do all your shopping there. It's a different environment. And it's going to be a much different environment after COVID. So you got Ben & Jerry's piling on Facebook. Ben & Jerry's became the latest company to join an ad boycott of Facebook and Instagram, calling on Facebook to stop the platform from, quote unquote, from being used to spread and amplify racism and hate. Facebook continually in the crosshairs from almost both sides of the political aisle. Uh, but guess what, folks? They keep printing money. <laughs> look at that. Look at that chart. From 137, we're sitting this morning at about 240. So you're going to open a bit lower with the market, but in a remarkable acceleration. I mean, you're prop approaching almost a 100% pop from those March lows of 137. Alphabet, Google, their unit of the target of criticism by newspaper publisher The Post. The paper said the publishers have told the Justice Department that Google's market power forces them into an unfair agreement. Well, somebody complaining about Google. Surprise, surprise. Uh, all right. And as we finish up this first segment, let's jump around to some of these tech stocks, folks, because it has been quite a run. You got Microsoft going to open about 201 all time highs yesterday, 203.95. We dipped down to a low, folks, of 132 on Microsoft. And how about it? Apple coming out. With their Worldwide Developer Conference, iOS 14, Apple charges to an all-time high at 372 yesterday. We're going to open this morning at, it looks like, about 365.40 by 365.50. Stay tuned, folks. When we come back, see what else we have on tap for Wednesday trading. We'll go with some of those trade concerns with Europe. We'll take a look at oil as well with inventories coming up in less than two hours. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of the sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metals sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by 21, the Dow off 234, and I'm going to start with silver. They're talking about silver in the den, folks, and check out that acceleration. My goodness, if you weren't paying attention, silver was just trading at $18 as of 8 a.m., and my goodness, what happened there? Fell out of bed. We're trading at 17.64, just dip below 17.50. We were size 18.25. Talk about a volatile market in silver. You jump over to gold, a little bit of a pullback as well. Nothing like the silver market, though, from 17.96, trading at 17.83. Not sure what's going on in that silver market, but they're selling it. That's what's going on for sure. Okay, jumping around to COVID numbers because that's playing into the market, folks. So you got to talk about what is happening here. It's going to affect earnings, revenue, etc. cetera. Uh, U.S., going by the Times data, yesterday, 35,000 cases for the first time since going back to April 24th. Today is June 24th. Highest total on a national basis in two months, folks. That is a rising curve. And things, you know, it's, it's, it's something if it's a rolling, stagnant deal that hospitals will be okay. If this continues to rise like that, there are going to be consequences in terms of earnings and revenue, let alone the consequences to human life. I'm bringing it back to the market, okay? There are going to be consequences if this thing spikes to 50,000, 100,000 cases a day. I mean, in Florida, you could call it a faint hope that that curve is starting to potentially flatten out. You're still dealing with three, four, five thousand 5,000 cases a day. We'll see where that plays out. You had Dr. Fauci testifying before Congress yesterday. One of the things they talked about is, hey, we're seeing these cases spiking. We're not seeing the death toll spiking. Um, what do you make of that? And, and his first reply was, it's too early, in my opinion, to be making estimates of that because deaths always lag cases by a dramatic amount. Hopefully that's not the case, but this is what we're going to find out in the next two to four weeks. And the market's going to find out. And it's a shaky market. We've talked about it many times. Add on to that, okay? Now we're going to jump. So you add on to that. Let me get the, let me get the page I want to get up here. You add on to that. Nope, not that one. We got a lot going on this morning. There we go. The U.S. is considering $3.1 billion in new tariffs on products from France, Germany, Spain, and the U.K. That a big story going into why the S&Ps are down 20 plus points this morning. The goods in consideration include olives, coffee, chocolate, beer, gin, some trucks, and machinery. The potential enforcement of the new 
of the new tariffs was open to public comment on Tuesday and is set to last until July 26th. So the U.S. is studying the possibility, slapping 3.1 billion, whoops, scrolled a little fast there, there we go, 3.1 billion in additional tariffs on goods from the U.K., France, Germany, and Spain. It's another step that's likely to exacerbate, I would agree, tensions, right? So this document was issued last night, first reported by Bloomberg, and it's from the trade representative, it's considering, quote unquote, an additional list of products. Now, when they get into it, uh, there was more in there from, I was jumping around to a few different articles, but the move is part of a wider reaction from the US in relation to longstanding dispute with the European Union over their subsidies to large civil aircraft manufacturers. There's a lot going on, folks. Nonetheless, um, trade concerns always gonna hit the market that going on this morning. Other headlines out there. Weekly home buyer mortgage demand ticks down, but is still a remarkable 18% higher than a year ago. One of the most remarkable stories uh, throughout all markets during COVID has been the strength in the real estate market. Uh, you could call it a transition in a cycle. I mean, families, people working from home, spending more time at home, not needing to be so tied to maybe your physical office. You see a lot of tech firms, whether it's in Seattle, right? All that stuff, all of a sudden overnight, hey, guess what? You can work remotely 365 days a year. You don't have to buy an 1,800 square foot two bedroom, two bath home for $1.2 million in San Francisco, you can go buy a home on the shores of sunny Florida and work remotely in a much more affordable, higher quality of living establishment. Nonetheless, all that playing into it. Uh, total mortgage application volume fell 8.7% last week from the previous week, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association. Home buyer demand for mortgages fell 3% for the week, but 18% higher than a year ago. Applications to refinance a home fell 12% for the week, but were 76% higher than the same week in 2019. Rates are low, folks, and I wonder how that's gonna play out in terms of refinances, but nonetheless, you're talking about strong, strong mortgage application volume for what we're going through in other markets out there. Another interesting story that had popped up, Venezuela. So the rival leaders has been going on for a while. You got Maduro up there, the strong man, and then you have, uh, Guado, who the U.S. supports, the U.K. supports as the rightful leader of the Venezuelan country and their people. So they're going at it in terms of who gets access to the billion dollars in gold reserves stored in the vaults of Bank of England. Now, you know, part of the allegations out there is that President Maduro is basically selling off all the assets that the country has to maintain power, selling off everything that the people has. Nonetheless, that's gonna play out in the Bank of England. Uh, the hearing began in London on Monday, expected to last four days, represents an extraordinary case for the crisis-stricken South American country. Venezuela's central bank, controlled by Maduro, is seeking to order to force the Bank of England to hand over the lion's share of the country's gold reserves. The reason why I really don't see that happening, just reading a few things going on out here, is that the UK itself, right now, recognizes Guado. So how are they gonna hand it over to Maduro? But it's an, it's, it's an interesting case to see how it happens when one country is holding gold and you have basically a struggle for power going on in another country, and that's played out in England to the tune of billions at stake. Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is a story here for sure, right? You saw that President Trump talking about the H-1B visas, uh, doing away with those, trying to push American workers, and what, what, you know, there's repercussions, folks, in the UK swooping right in, trying to lure the tech talent that Trump blocked from the US. See how that plays out? There's a lot of great minds that come from abroad, folks, and they can contribute to societies. And we're cutting that off, and other countries are going to pick that up. That could have some long-term effects as this plays out. We'll see how it hits. Apple. So Apple in China. Apple iPhone sales in China drop in May after recent rebound, but Apple shows signs of resilience, is the quote iPhone sales and shipments fell in May versus April, according to third party, party data. Apple was affected by the shutdown in China, of course, during the height of the coronavirus pandemic. Apple sold 3.6 million iPhones in China in May, down from 3.9 million in April, 7.7% fall versus April, but higher than the 3.05 that they sold in May of 2019. It contrasts with the 160% month-on-month rise in April where Apple benefited from pent-up demand. So they had a lot of pent-up demand, right? It shoots up to 3.9 million in April, comes back down to 3.6. Uh, nonetheless, folks, Apple, they're gonna be just fine. And they got the 5G cycle coming up. 
probably part of the reason that this has accelerated so much, but Apple opening basically flat today after reaching all-time highs yesterday of 372.38. Jumping over to Amazon shares, talk about some strength, folks. 27.83. All-time high for Amazon yesterday. Looks like you're going to open right now at 27.78 for Amazon. Checking in on some of the tech stocks as we round out this final segment. 201.38 right now from Microsoft after 203.95 yesterday. Let's check in on Mr. Elon Musk. What's he going to do? We closed at 1,000 yesterday. We're going to open at 9.88 today for Tesla. We'll see. I think he'll be all right on that one. Stay tuned, folks. S&P's minus 18 market negative territory, but off the lows of the session, we'll come back, finish up what we have on tap for Wednesday trading. We'll take a look at gold as well. We'll check in on that silver that's rocking too, now down 50 cents for silver. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. Today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Jumping over to a chart of Peloton. Quite a run it's had. It just doesn't stop. Peloton, all-time highs yesterday, 56.60. We're going to open, it looks like, in record territory yet again with a bid ask right around 57 this morning for Peloton from 1770. Talk about a perfect storm of acceleration. This company, IPOing, there was a lot of speculation. They might be in trouble competing with a very expensive product that 
just a very expensive product and it's it's an exercise boat bike folks for thousands of dollars and then you got to sign up uh for their service to watch their classes but man that is a perfect storm from 17 to 57 on peloton and we're ticking up even as we speak now 57 15 on the open there yesterday election day in a lot of states so we got a lot going on in terms of who will face uh, Senate leader Mitch McConnell, that to be undecided. You're going to have a lot of vote in uh, mail-in votes, and this is going to change the way that things uh, play out on election night. And we all got to start being prepared that it used to be that you vote at the polls and things were counted when you're dealing with a lot of vote in ballots that can be done, can be done securely, no matter what you're hearing out there, it can. It is done securely in many states already in terms of voting by mail, uh, but it's a different process in terms of counting them. And so we're seeing in a lot of these races, uh, photo finishes, things are close, but guess what? The exact number of votes left to count isn't clear. They're talking about mail-ins. That's going to play out. We might be dealing with something like this where there's a few things left up in the air, but big night last night in the primaries in terms of what's going to be happening in the general in November. All right, we'll finish it up with a little bit more COVID because the numbers are stark, folks. You get into whether it's Florida, uh, Houston, Texas. So Texas had more than 5,000 cases in the past 24 hours, this article was talking about, when uh, their governor, Greg Abbott, came on their TV Tuesday, yesterday. The state health department had 5,489 new cases. And where this really gets dicey, folks, is that we're talking about hospitalizations surging more than 10%, right? That's the big deal. Cases aren't the big deal. It's going to be hospitalizations and all that stuff. Their intensive care capacity exhausted in 11 days. Surge beds full in 38 days. You're going to see this play out in the next two to four weeks. And guess what, folks? You might see it play out with the S&Ps at 3,100. Watch out. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pezzavento coming up next with Trade What You See, live programming all day at TFNN. We'll be right back.